if you're like me and you tend to buy a lot of sentiment dies but then you kind of think what do I do with them can't just stick them on a card all the time I'm going to show you five different ways of using your sentiment dies that you may not have thought of before this is actually making the sentiment the focal point rather than an afterthought now stay tuned to the end because I'm going to actually show you the five techniques and then I'm also going to show you at the end the five finished cards so you can get an idea for how these can look on a finished project Everything I'm using is linked down below as always and of course I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel if you like tutorials like this. Now I'm working today with the Mental Health UK Autumn Whisper Sentiment dies. These also come with a stamp set as well. I just love the size of the dies and they're perfect for me to be able to easily show you all of these techniques. Technique number one is actually using your dies to give your card base a shaped edge. So I've got myself a 5 by 7 card base here and it's a top fold and I'm going to add my sentiment die to the bottom to shape the edge here. Now I can do the front panel or I can do both the front and back. That's entirely up to you. I like to just do the front because it remains stability within the card then. So I'm taping this where I'd like it. It almost reaches the edges of the card but not quite but that's absolutely fine and I'm going to put this into my die cutting machine. Now I'm going to put my die towards the um, front of the plate, so the first part that's going to go through the rollers. I'm going to put my top plate back on around about an eighth of an inch or half a centimetre, something like that, from the top of the die there. Now, just so you can just see, I've got the die edge there just a little bit further out than the plate. Then I'm going to run this through my machine. So when you turn your die over, you should see that you've got uh, the die cut, but the top remains intact with the card base. Now we're going to take a mat that you can cut on, a ruler and a craft knife. I'm going to lay my ruler over most of the word, the part that did cut, just leaving the part that didn't cut there. And I'm going to cut around the word, so the excess of the card, so between the letters first of all up to the lines that cut. Once I've got my lines there with my ruler, I can take my ruler away and I can just go over these a couple of times until I've got through the card base. Now bearing in mind this is a thick card base, it's probably around about 300 GSM, so it is going to be quite hard to get through with a craft knife. You need to go over it a couple of times. So I've just taken the excess away from the edge and then I can go round these center pieces as well. So there's my shaped card base for the bottom of my card. It still stands, it's still sturdy enough, but it's really neat and all one piece so you don't have to think about reattaching that word on. Now, of course, if you wanted to do this to the back as well, you would simply take your die, use your front as a template and reposition it in the same place just behind and repeat the process. For my next technique, I'm going to create a rainbow shadow around my word. So I've cut my word from black, it's going onto a white card base. So to create the shadow effect, I've got three different coloured card stocks. The ones I've chosen are purple, green and turquoise, but you can choose any. And you can actually do this with multiple different colours. So you don't have to use just three or two, you can use seven or ten. You know, It's entirely up to you and how much die cutting you want to do. So I've started off by making my life a lot easier by cutting each of the panels with a nesting die. So this is a simple straight edge rectangle die and this just means that the width of each of my panels are going to be kept the same. The height is going to be adjusted as we work through. So just deciding which order I want to have my layers in, I'm going to start with the uh, bright green as the base layer, so the one at the bottom, the one at the bottom you'll see the least of, the one at the top you'll see the most of. Now I'm going to cut this into my card, I'm going to decide do I want the word love in the middle, do I want it at the top, at the bottom, so I think if I go completely for the centre then I can't really go too wrong with that. So just taping that down with some low tack tape, I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine. I'm going to take the word love out. Now I'm actually going to save that because I can use that another time as a drop shadow or something similar. I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm just going to snip on either side of the word, directly in the middle. You can measure this of course if you prefer. I'm not going to glue everything down until I'm happy with all how it all looks, but I'm going to separate that first layer 
up and down around about um, five mil either way so I've given myself almost a centimetre through the centre there that's clear. Now I'm going to repeat this with the other two colours lifting them up slightly as I go. So when all your layers are pieced together with um, a slight gap between each one you can pop your uh, original black one directly back into the middle and you've got this really fun um, it's kind of drop shadow that goes down and up all the different colours so stay tuned for the end where I'll have glued this together and completely finished it off. This third technique is what's known as the eclipse technique so I'm just going to die cut directly into some patterned paper now this could be a full-on floral or like mine just a nice simple subtle watercolour background. Now keep the inside of any of your letters that pop out because you may want to put these back later. I tend to vary this depending on usually the pattern paper and the size of the word as to whether I actually pop these back in or not. I have a look and decide which will look best at the time. So I'm also going to cut the same die from an adhesive foam. So this is a piece of black foam that's got double sided so it's sticky on both sides. This is from the Creative Craft Products range and you'll find this linked down below in the description. It comes in white and black and again I do switch colours depending on the project type and the colour of my pattern paper. So I'm peeling the backing off of the adhesive foam just over the word. I'm actually leaving it in the background at the moment because this just makes it so much easier to adhere the two layers together and the die cut pattern paper I'm going to pop on top exactly over the top no drop shadow or offset at all and before I release that I'm going to glue this one down onto a piece of cardstock then I'm going to release my foam from the adhesive backing just gently peel that away pop out the pieces from inside the center you don't need to keep these pieces peel off the backing and pop this back inside of the aperture that you've got on the backing paper there now you can see the word is slightly raised up so it's subtle but it's really nice as a background you could pop a main word like this and then a smaller little uh, continuation of a sentiment maybe in some uh, label words just to the side now I'm going to just pop these pieces back in I'm going to glue them in flat to the white cardstock not with the foam just so you can see the difference there we go so that just makes the word even more subtle but I think that's a fabulous effect then apologies I did miss filming a small section where my camera decided not to record it but um, you simply need to place the word that you've die cut onto some acetate and fit that back into the card base using the excess the second piece of excess obviously the first one you cut your die from um, but the second piece as a guide for the width of the gap so I've put a piece of acetate at the front here with the word strength adhered on and a piece at the back as well and that's created this card base here with the word encased into a window inside it. And if you've got a nice big bold sentiment die you can use this as a shaker element so a shaker window so I've just taped a, a die here this is the word inspire onto the front of my card base um, I've opened my card up and I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine like so now you want to be sure to keep any of the excess pieces that fall out of the centers of the words so remove your die and if you can just keep everything intact to the side for a moment and we're going to place a piece of acetate on the back here like so. I've cut myself a second similar size piece of acetate and I'm just going to go around the edge of my word with some foam tape ensuring that there's no gaps. I'm going to place some sparkly sequins just inside of here. Now I'm going with rainbow colours but you can go with any colour of a sequin or gem that suits your project. And then I'm going to peel the backing off of the foam and place that second piece of acetate over the top. So then you have your shaker element, but it's easier to read the word if you pop back inside the um, excess from the letters. Now I found the easiest way to do this is if everything stays within the die, just simply pop some glue onto the reverse of them while they're in the die. 
and there's another one there. Take yourself a pokey tool or something similar like a pair of tweezers. I'm going to lay this back in where it went before and just push each of these pieces out. As you carefully lift those away, they should be in exactly the correct place there. Now I'd always suggest popping something like a darker piece of cardstock behind here to make the word even easier to read. So we've created these five cards, I've decorated them very very simply just with some simple mats and layers or some pattern paper added to them. You can of course incorporate these techniques into much more complex cards if you wish but hopefully you've learned something. Let me know in the comments which is your favourite of these five techniques and if you love this die set you'll find that linked down below or just here. If you're new to my channel, I'd love it if you could subscribe to me too to catch up with other tips and tutorials like this. Take care everybody, I'll see you again very soon.